This is Land of Favela, Psalm 61. It's eight verses, verse one. For the chief musician for a stringed instrument by David. Hear my cry, God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I'll call to you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a refuge for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will dwell in your tent forever. I'll take refuge in the shelter of your wings, Selah. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You'll prolong the king's life. His years shall be for generations. He shall be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your loving kindness and truth that they may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever that I may fulfill my vows daily. Comment in verse 2, From the ends of the earth I'll call to you when my heart is overwhelmed. Sometimes we're overwhelmed. Depending on where we are in life, maybe we're overwhelmed now by some ongoing situation, or maybe we only need to file this away for when something comes up later. When we are overwhelmed, no matter if we're at home or at the far end of the earth in verse 2, we'll call to God. Then lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He'll lead us to a higher place of stability. There's a total solution to whatever it is. He'll get us out by various ways. His written word will give a lot of guidance. He'll instruct us by the Spirit. He'll instruct us by others, by dreams, and by many other ways he has at his disposal. And he can just stretch out his arms and change things for us. In verse 3, for you have been my refuge. It's not David's first rodeo. God was his refuge in the past, and he's making him his refuge again. Then God is a strong tower from the enemy. Who's the enemy? The real battle isn't with flesh and blood, with walking and breathing men and women. They can be our enemies for sure, but by far the most important and determinative struggle is always within, spiritually. Will we handle it God's way, by the Word and Spirit of God? If so, we're already in that higher place and getting higher by the minute. If not, there's no telling how much further we can sink. God is the strong tower from the enemy. Other than being in God, we're exposed to destruction. God's the strong tower. In Him is the place to be. In verse 4, David doesn't know about you, but he knows the position he'll take. He says, I'll dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the shadow of your wings. So whether we want to visualize the place to be as a tower, a tent, or under his wings, it's all with him. In verse 5, you, God, have heard my vows. Obviously, David made some vows to God. Someone might take a vow by saying, God, if you get me out of this situation, I'll do such and such. Jesus warned against making vows because we might not have the power to follow through. Besides, we don't need to entice God to help us because he freely gives us all things. He doesn't take payment except the blood of Christ in payment for our sins, which he's already received. He helps us not because we pay him, but because we're his children if we're in Christ. The sacrifice he wants is not a payment of a vow, but obedience. If we're not obedient, we're not his children anyway. And obedience is the path out of the situation. And God doesn't need anything. We're free to make vows, but if we do, we better pay up. And in verse 5, you've given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Maybe our family heritage is poor. Maybe our fathers and mothers weren't good in spiritual matters, derelict in spiritual matters, even going back long generations in our family. But when we're adopted into the family of God, our heritage changes. We're born again, according to John chapter 3. Now our family heritage comes from believers, if we had any in our family, and from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and on down the line. All those in the past who feared God, that's where our heritage comes from. And we'll inherit what they inherited, which is the ability to take refuge in God and a permanent place in his family and kingdom. Then David says, speaking of what God will do for him in this life and the next, in verses 6 and 7, You will prolong the king's life. His years shall be for generations. He shall be enthroned in God's presence forever. Also translated, he'll abide in God's presence forever. Psalm 62 is next.